TCG Productions Mind Power Composition Musical influences and backgrounds um, I grew up with music, I'm sure we all did My father used to like soul, so there's an influence um, And I lived in the era of hip hop So we all grew up with music I chose to like hip hop, that's why Musical influences, background is I made an album basically a couple of years ago with my brother since the stricken dark romanticism and I used MV A800 Roland so that's my background as it stands it's quite short simple music I bought an MV A800 my first musical item and then I purchased it was this as I said well it must be six six years ago seven seven years ago we bought it maybe even longer i never know it's been it's been with us for a long time and i say us me and my brother so yeah six seven eight years ago my brother came to me and said we want to make hip-hop i never made music in my life so it was like what are you talking about it's like i want to make hip-hop sinister strip and he's like all right come then let's do it and he, he said let's buy this machine so 10 years ago we bought this machine sat down played with it didn't have a clue so that was the start of my music production experiment. Was I shown the ropes or did I pick it up myself? I definitely picked it up myself in the sense that as soon as you get it, you want to touch it and play with it. I didn't have a clue, not a clue how to make music. I didn't know what a kick was, a snare, a hi-hat, a rim, bass, we all got basses, but making it into something using this was completely new. So the manual came out, big old thing, you read that, you turned it on, pressed a few buttons, you kind of got it operating with the screen and the mouse and all that, and then you felt, right, what do I do? Where's the samples? How do I get it all in? So um, the manual helps, the internet is always good. You know what I mean? Just there's forums for this thing, and it's just filled. But to be honest, I think it didn't make much sense. So it was a start from the beginning completely. Read the manual, go online, and just play with this thing. You know what I mean? It's coming from the pub, drunk, oh, make a beat, ah, make some mad thing, listen to it in the morning, just like, nope, it beat me again. I ain't got a clue how it works or what I'm doing. So it was a complete start from the beginning and work my way up. Um, with my brother being into hip hop already, obviously he, he was like, should be like this, and there was a bit of guidance and stuff like that. So, Definitely between the two of us, we used to sit down and we played with it and eventually we got something out of it that we wanted and we felt comfortable with it. So it was a case of learning from the beginning. But with a little bit of knowledge of hip hop and the internet is always these days. So yeah, basically. Yeah. How did one acquire the MV A800? Um, Again, my brother sat down and he said, look, here's this machine that RZA uses. And uh, we looked at this video on YouTube and RZA's got this, this MV and it's got his Wu-Tang sign on it. And he's playing it, man. He looked intuitive. And obviously, when you see someone like that doing it, you kind of go, all right, that makes sense. And not having a clue about the NPCs out there, machine, I don't you know, maybe that came out a bit afterwards. But I didn't really know what was the best model or make to go for. So we were kind of influenced by the fact that he could sit down and make a whole album on that. And it was an album we loved, so why not try and use the same thing, man? So that's 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 definitely why we acquired it. And again, starting from the beginning, I weren't no RZA in the beginning, I never will be, but you were inspired, so you played with it. So yeah, that's uh, I think that answers that question. Again the, again, the steepness of the, the learning curve meant that it took a long time to, for me and my brother to actually collaborate on something. Because if you know Sinister Jack, then he's been around for a long time and he, he could just dance off somewhere else and someone else would produce a whole album for him quite happily and they'd get it done and it would get produced. So there was also that case of if I want to make hip hop with my brother as a team as we started out, then I had to learn quick and fast, you know what I mean? So the, steep, the steepness held me back for at least three years, I think, as I got to grips with what a rim was and a snare and how it should be ordered and how where the pockets were within those beats, basically. So, and I'm a busy guy. I don't always have time to sit down and do music and it takes time. So again, maybe the, the, the steepness was to do with how much time you got to do these things what you want to achieve when you when you sit down and do it and is there a project to aim for and 
definitely my project was to aim and release an album with my brother basically so I had all those motivations to keep me learning basically so the steep this was there I think it'll always be there with this kind of technology but I've, I've got to grips with what I know to make a beat now I think so I think that's that's yeah again just learning this learning this machine I mean everything's steep when you start out so how long did it take me to master it I can never I'll never master it I've always I set myself a level in this machine to go for and even the word mastering I, I will never do that on this machine I'll send it to someone else so mastering you can do it on this machine it's quite neat if that option's in there mix down mastering produce a CD there it goes it's always had that um, system through it but I haven't got the time to learn all that stuff myself I know other people quite like doing the mastering of things and the frequency all that stuff so I'm never master this machine I've used it as a tool for what I want to do but I know there's more in there one day maybe who knows time permitting so definitely not master it yeah. obviously I still own it I don't think I could use anything else at the moment it's just part of me now I mean like I say when you use something for seven eight years you know what I mean it's got your fingerprints all over it's grubby it's just it does what I want it to do so yeah no I'm owning it for now I'm not even going to jinx it by talking about it breaking because I don't think well you won't find another one and then I'd have to adapt and learn again and that steepness of the learning curve comes back in whatever so I still own it I want to keep owning it I'll keep using it because it's fun I enjoy it basically do I think it was the right bit of gear to get me started well obviously yes <clears throat> because I've started I've, I've actually achieved what I set out to do when I purchased it was just to make a simple album from from myself and my brother to prove that once you put your mind to something you can do it and be creative in the process so yeah definitely man it's, it's it was the right piece of kit <laughs> it's been the only piece of kit and uh, yeah, now I'm happy to keep using it. It's, it's, it's part of the timeline of machines that have come out. So it may be a little bit unique in its, in, in its standing in the hip hop industry of NPCs and machines and stuff like that. But I'm happy with the purchase, man. And, and yeah, I can't say no more than that really. Done its job. What equipment do I use nowadays? Um, it's simply the MV. My monitors, you've got to have monitors, that's something I learned quite quickly, listening to silly headphones and stuff, you're never going to get what you want out of music. Um, and my laptop, the internet, and my focus right just plums in and I'm sampling away my crate, as I call it. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. Um, I was going to say basically again, it's not basic, but it does the job. Monitors, machine, Roland. Uh, mouse keyboard yeah I love it simple simple holds it all the equipment I've used over the years has just been this I mean I made a made might have made a beat or two on the PlayStation <laughs> way back when when music came out and you had the opportunity to do these things as technology grew you, you, you always had an interest in music and how it was made or I did personally so you have a dabble with it here and there keyboards around friends houses even playing with decks and scratching and all that sort of stuff that goes towards it but um, for me when it comes to making a beat that actually has gone somewhere and done something this is the only machine I've used Roland MV8800 so yeah that's it there's one prefer hardware or software I think it's a bit of both with this machine you can't have one without the other now what's running this is software it's Roland software so to have the monitor and the mouse and the box in front of you personally they go hand in hand nowadays. If you, I mean, sure, there's techniques to keep using the old day ways of doing stuff, but now it's common. It's software and hardware. My favourite brand of musical equipment, <laughs> again, as you probably get it, but uh, it's MV800. It's the only one I know. Um, again, as I said, you keep an eye on other things, and if there's an opportunity or reason to purchase another machine. It probably would be machine because of its ease of use and how I can move it around with me in my life sort of thing. So, but no, Roland again. What musical equipment would I recommend to a beginner? Um, <clears throat> it's got to depend on the budget really and how ambitious you are. I think um, I'm a working man. I could go and buy one of these because I worked hard for it. So that was that was easy for me. If you're young and you want to do it all, oh man, there's options. Just you know, beg a friend. It's always worked. Uh, 
eBay, <laughs> all that stuff. But you could do it with software and you get so far, but I think you lose the organic side of making a beat. And I think really once you put your hands on something and you're playing with it, I think that gives you something else. So as a beginner, at least get something that you can hit the pads with and you know what I mean, do all that stuff with, I think. So yeah, something that's physical rather than software on that case. It's more fun and you get more out of it. It's more intuitive. Why did I choose hardware over software? Again, it just comes down to the fact that in my day job, I'm a graphic designer, so I'm on the laptop all the time and I'm doing the same things basically that I, that I would do when I make music, Photoshop and all that stuff. It's just layers and layers and layers and sitting on the laptop doing music in the same way didn't inspire me. So definitely for me to step away from the laptop and that, that hunched positioning, come on to the MV, just felt nicer for me. It felt like a different way of creating something. So it was a, it, it was a different thing for me. Man. Uh, that, that's definitely why I went for this over the laptop and the software because it felt different and it took me away from the mundane not mundane but that rigmarole of being on the laptop just day to day stuff so it was nice, it was a breakaway thing my views on sampling oh, it's the best bit about it for me personally because I definitely I like drums but when you put the two together and you get it right, the sampling bit is the most fun, man. I'm listening to stuff that's just stupid. If you found me listening to it without any reason, that like dudes walking through bamboo forests, playing pipes, like, you know what I mean? This is random stuff. And it's like, I'll take that, I'll sample that, i use that somewhere. It's got that essence that I'm looking for. So I'm finding samples everywhere. It's quite annoying now. I've got my phone, I hear something in the movie. I'm writing down the name of that movie. If I need to, I'll go and hunt that sample down again. If it don't work, it don't work, but I've got this thing in my head now, sampling, sampling, sampling. So it's, it's, it's the best bit, man, but I think I'm not looking for a specific soul break or something like that. I keep finding myself looking for different samples because I think my musical influences are quite global and it's not just restricted to this hip hop sound. So I just kind of find samples from anything. If it's the wind blowing in the trees, yeah, that classics are, I'll sample it. If it's a plane five, I'll sample it. I'll take it all, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, and most of it's probably coming from the internet. Whatever quality, I don't care, I'll just take it. If it needs to be made dirtier, I'll make it dirtier. If I need to boost it, I'll boost it. So whatever it takes, I'm sampling it, basically. Sorry. <laughs> Genre of music that I find myself sampling the most is, is probably film scores and that kind of thing. I've sat through three hour videos of horror sounds on the internet and I found one little jangly noise in the, in the kitchen sink. I, can't, I use that, do you know what I mean? So I find myself listening to weird stuff, genre stuff. It's, it's kind of horrorcore stuff. Um, anything that's got atmosphere, I think, because sometimes I'm not a beat maker, I'm more of a uh, soundscaper. I think that's what I kind of look at it as. I'm not necessarily trying to make the classic sound. I want to make something that's slightly different. If it's got a um, technology sound to it or something like that, then I'll, I'll probably nick it, sample it, filter it in somewhere and, and just use it somewhere basically. I think it kind of fits the music me and my brother are making as well. It's kind of, we don't want it to be strictly Wu-Tang-esque, which we all love for sure, but one thing we say we can't rinse and repeat the same process. Why not be different? Do you know what I mean? And I definitely think other artists. Like Doctor Octagon. That's an album, man, that I love, and that's different. It's, it's driven by hip hop, but the sampling is, is different. The genre is taken from hospital sounds or whatever. I just love that album. So trying to be a little bit different. So no real genre, but if I had to pigeonhole it, it'd be sort of dark, moody sounds. Do I share my samples with people? I'm happy to. I don't have a big circle of, of producer people that I know. Again, it's me and my brother, we sit in this room and we collaborate with ideas and sounds and stuff like that, since stricken. And that's probably where, as far as sharing goes, but we know the game with sampling. You can't you can't be just brazen with it. I've sampled you, I'm gonna put it out there. I mean, if you wanna make money, you've got to be sensible, you know? So, Sharing your samples, I, I, I am, I've done it, I've 
I've made a whole album full of samples and I shared it with the world. If you knew what sample that was, great. If you didn't, fair enough. People come to me and ask me what the samples were at the start of tracks and stuff. I, I told them. But if the artist you took the samples from <laughs> suddenly don't want you sharing it, then it's a different game. Your music would get taken down straight away. So sharing's cool and trendy and all that, but if you want your music to be heard proper, I'm not sure how you play the sample game. On the underground level, is what it is. How do I acquire my samples? Uh, mostly through the internet now. Um, when we made Dark Romanticism, we said, right, we're going to use everything in this house, this flat, one bedroom flat. So we've got computer games, we've got records, we've got CDs, we've got an abundance of things. We could just turn the radio on flip it left and right and make some noise and we sample all of that stuff so we went a little bit inwards and said right this can sample what's here a couple of times we made the track we thought oh we need something we'd go on youtube and we'd find it basically so that's how i get my samples it's just around me it's definitely not crate digging trying to find the dustiest old two pound record somewhere i'm not doing that man i've, I've done that when i bought hip-hop in the beginning you know what i mean not the two pound i bought all the records i got them all stacked in there gathering dust man they're a room filler and when you've got family you can't have these things sitting around like so i don't buy records i don't go out buy, buying some record with man got flares and high heels on and all that i don't bring that home if I want a freaky sample, I'll go on the YouTube. I know the quality ain't good, but I'm not here for quality. I'm just here to do, make some beats and express myself in some way. So, there we go. My favorite sampler software, again, the MV. It's all I do, I plug straight in. And I'm, I'm sampling straight away. The software's built in, it's all layered up for me. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's multi-tracked, it's, it's there's filters, there's, you know, everything's in this machine basically. So the Roland MV8800 provides me with everything I need. When making a beat, do I focus on the drums or the samples first? Um, beat, always first, always the drums. So I lay out the grid and it is a grid in the end. You can offset it a little bit if you want to just make it sound organic or shuffle it or do that stuff, we all know that. Um, but I need to put the beat structure in first, whether it's just a one bar, two bar, four bar. I might even make an eight bar before I even put the sample in. At least then I can take the snare and the kick out as I make it basically, and I can find the little dips and moves. So for me, I make the beat first. If I want to change the drums later, that's easy. You know, take them in, take them out. You don't have to keep playing it. I'm not someone who keeps playing the drums. I sit there all day nodding away. I just go to the grid, click, 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 it's there. And if I want to make it a bit more organic, then I know I can shift it around if I need to. Um, so for me, the beat first, and then I'm going to look for the pockets where the sample can play it out itself. So that's that's what I aim to do when I make music. Um, that's what happened when I started making music. And that's 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 the, that's the way I've made it ever since, basically. So I'm just comfortable, got the beat in, then find the sample, but then see if it happens. Sometimes it doesn't even work man, and then you're back square one, you just got to know when oh, am I taking too long on this, or is it not working, or start again. You can even keep the beat, delete the sample, find another one, go again. So, beat first for me, personally. My two favourite instruments and why, based on what I would try to use when making a beat, rather than an instrument you hear day to day, or well, you could learn yourself, etc. I think I like a guitar because you can find a bass or something in there. Um, obviously, we could all say drums, but I think that goes without saying that you can have them anyway. Um, and strings, anything stringy that can be dark, you know, I mean, not even light but drifty, so something atmospheric. So I, I kind of look for strings, and if I can find a good guitar riff or something just a mm, that I can use and expand, then I'll take that as well. So I'll probably look for guitar and strings first for a driving effect when making a beat. <laughs> can I play any instruments? No, nope. um, no, never tried. Uh, don't know why. Um, I play football a lot, man. So. But no, never tried to play instruments. Um, 
like I said, I've barely could, I didn't even know what a kick and a snare was when I started, man. So, nah, unfortunately, I can't. I say unfortunate because I do know the benefits of what it is to play an instrument. I think it's quite cool. We all know, we all know the saxophone is, is the sexiest guy in the room, isn't it? <laughs> so, but no, they ain't me, man. If I could learn to play any two instruments, what would they be and why? Um, I don't think I'm the kind of instrument guy, to be honest, you know what I mean? Uh, playing a guitar, yeah man, it's good. You know when you see people play guitars, it's cool, isn't it? I don't think I'm that type of guy, but to learn an instrument and have that time. I, I mean, how many times do you hear someone get a guitar and play with a dark tune, you know what I mean? It's gritty and nasty, that's, I can't, that's not the music in me, so I think I'll stick to these kind of instruments, man. And, 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 and make that sort of sound rather than the standard stuff that we keep hearing. If I could have two producers to come into this room with me and sit down and, and show me something, um, the first would be Eric B. Because him and Rakim made that tune, Paid In Full Man, with that sample of the Asian lady singing man and we all know the one that's just rough man when I heard that when I was a teenager that set the place on fire and it showed me that it didn't have to be the classic sample you used every time of the soul or whatever you could drop something in and maybe being an English guy you hear these sounds more often or you're slightly more familiar to these kind of things but for me I'd love to sit oh, I'd be in that moment where he said, let's put this in this tube. You know what I mean? And then the debate around it or whatever. And every man was, yeah, that's what I thought. Well, I'm not sure. I think for that moment, I'd have him in there and ask him, can he repeat it? And let's try and do that ethnic kind of sound as well, which I love basically. So that was a bit of an inspiration when it comes to making beats. Uh, second producer, I, I think, would be the RZA. There is no not because he produced every beat that you heard the Wu-Tang make, she was but because he produced a group that were kind of supersonic in many ways, man. Their, their message was different. Their philosophies were different. They weren't fighting the power. They were, they were showing you a different way, man. So I, I like the Wu-Tang for that. And I think RZA, you know, the jizzle was there before him. But the RZA for me is probably someone who produced something that stands the test of time. And I think that's remarkable. Really. So yeah, two producers. If I could hand pick two MCs to work on a joint of mine and why. Um, if I went back in time and picked two of my favorite MCs, I think it'd be Racky, just because of the message he brought. And it weren't Nancy Pat, it was solid hip hop rap. And it was proper rough. And the other one would be a Cool Keith from Ultra Magnetic MCs and then as he moved on, because that guy, I liked him because he was different, man, and he's, he's, cool, he's so sonic, you know what I mean? He's, he's out there in the, in the stratosphere kind of stuff. I dig that, and I like that a lot, man. So maybe someone like him, there's numerous other MCs. If I had today to pick two MCs that I know, Tesla and Sinister. Because <laughs> they kill the joint, man, you know what I mean? <laughs> Top three producers and why? Um, there's loads, man. Um, I'm not, I'm not someone who remembers names basically and I, I struggle to remember that was that and that was that. Um, one producer I always loved was Scarecrow. So he was from East Coast of Fear. And he was, um, I don't know, he was like the Monster Mob or someone like that, man. He made, he made some beats, but they were Dungeness beats, you know I mean? I used to love listening to him. And it was like on the Dusty Tape kind of vibe with Holocaust over and that. I used to love that. Again, I think, it was kind of different to the other hip hop that we always heard when associated to the Kid Beats and all that stuff. So I always like him. I always thought he was cool. Um, whether he's top, hey man, the internet will tell you that boy. Um, Fourth Disciple, obviously. Um, all the guys that produced with the Wu Tang, I think they, they smashed something. For me, it was, the, it was the Kung Fu sample of all things that I loved in that music, man. They had to nab that off those. But I grew up with that era anyway, so. Um, Anyone who works under the Wu Tang, I think. Um, if I had to choose one more producer, I mean, there's loads, man. There's loads. Gangsta, Crew, Roxy, or Smooth. Olden day stuff that I think standard, man. 
Yeah, I'm not so much of the Tribe Called Quest kind of vibe. I like the darker stuff. That's, that's for sure. Uh, Dr. Octagon, whoever produced that album, I should dig out the album and have a look. I ain't prepared for that question, but I love that album. Man. That album is different. Producers. Also, English hip hop, man. I listen to more English hip hop than American hip hop at times. And I think people like Gunshot, Hijack, even Silver Bullet, man. If you listen to how they're produced, and the samples they used, they were more spacey-fied, Hollywood-fied, and I think that's definitely where I got an influence from, people like Blade as well. So all those old producers, like they were probably around, many of them, I don't even know their names, but they done something different with the music, which I probably more follow suit of rather than the old Jay Diller approach and all that stuff, which is wicked, man. We all grew up loving that music. But I think if it's referring to producers that I can not emulate, but get signed from those kind of people, man. Besides anyone else I spoke about, obviously I work with my with Sinister Stricken pretty much solely at the moment because we don't want we're, we're pretty focused on sitting here together and it's wicked, man, that we can sit together and make stuff and plan things out. Not every beat I give him is going to work, but we're working and sieving through stuff at the moment, so um, it's quite hard for me to say who am I feeling right now without first saying. Sinister Stricken, because I think it gives me an opportunity to make beats that, again, ain't the normal stuff, which fits my approach to it, basically. So, Sinister Stricken, obviously. Um, who else am I feeling? Um, I'm always looking out for Raven, Better and Tessa, because I love their vibe, man, and I think that's always cool stuff. Um, and anyone associated with the Triple Darkness, I think that's the, the recent stuff. Um, I mean, every day on the internet, you get presented with someone. And the one thing you don't have to do with hip hop nowadays is go out there and see who's top of the chart or whatever, because you're getting fed it yourself now. It's up to you to press play and like it or what now. So um, I just it's just nice to see hip hop still being made. And um, it's nice to have social media telling me that it's still being made on a daily basis. So I'm feeling it all basically. I'm not in the circles to pinpoint certain other producers. I know there's a lot, obviously, because having worked on this series with my man Rings of Saturn, I've seen many of the producers smashing it. So, I mean, it's like putting your hand in the pot and pulling out one. You've got this whole series, I think, to watch and, and dig into and then maybe find your top producers and someone who's, who's doing exactly the same, even though I'm in this bloody episode, I'm <laughs> So working on the series, so I'm seeing, do you know what I mean? There's, there's enough people out there doing this thing, and I think the hip hop vibe that's coming from it is neat, man. I think it's, it's good, it's still going on. I'm an old man still doing this shit, but it's out there, man, it's good. So no, no one's really top at the moment. Maybe the hill's empty and you could build your fort on it if you're banging them out daily. But for me, everyone's top. So the first track I'm going to showcase now is is the title track of the album Me and Sinister Stricken put together, Dark Romanticism. Um, I might as well just play it in the intro sequence. I mean, all those sounds again, pianos, dark, gloomy sounds I was talking about. People singing, you know what I mean? All that atmospheric stuff we were looking for to just encapsulate what we was looking for in the project, something old and a bit rotten, a bit beggarish, you know what I mean, it's based around dark romantic movement, so there was a bit of elegance in there, that's what it was, dark romanticism basically, that was the whole concept, it was a dark romantic era where the playwrights, the poems, the, the screenwriters, theatre writers, they changed everything basically, so right up Sinister Street and Street basically came up with the majority of the concept and I just latched on and said alright let me try and make a beat or some sort of sound that um, encapsulated so I didn't play the lyrics on the first verse I didn't turn these on but Solid production man, I mean, this was the first track we did that set it off. He, he came up here one night, switched on my MV and, and heard this track and he blessed it and I was away basically. So I come back and I'm like, wow, what's this? What's he rapping over my music for? 
like, I like this, let's make an album. So this was the start of everything, basically. Dark romanticism. I think about how long it took me to make this track. Maybe a couple of days, really, of tweaking, playing with it. You know when you're onto something good, Play with it, keep playing with it. My brother heard it. We check, rearranged the verses again. You know what I mean, maybe I had a 16 bar simple structure. He wanted it into a 20, 24 maybe. So we balanced things out on multiple tracks. I think it's a 14 track album. Um, I think the shortest track was two and a half minutes long. So everything was it was filled up, man. So it took a lot of work, man. Sitting up here going through it all, and I'm not sure how my brother writes. That's magic. But he can fit all these words and all these phrases in. It's just, yeah, it's, uh, hopefully it allows my view on hip hop and how I want to make things and him combine something different. That's what we wanted with Dark Romance, is something different. So, yeah. It's two years old now, I think. I still enjoy listening to it. <laughs> Side different, man. You miserable bastards. How dare you make trouble in my house? <laughs> so, dark romanticism, title track. Boom. Cool. Right, so, uh, second showcase will be um, another track of Dark Romanticism called Fatal Bouquet. And I think it just, again, just shows a similar sort of approach to Dark Romanticism track. We're just trying to make it all fit together. Now, it sounds similar, so the whole album game. had a sort of purpose rather than Don't a lot of tracks bung together. We've tried to make it a journey Get as there, such. So we use a lot of these samples just to break up back. the beats and every now and again, just to pause, ah, give you something weird to listen to. And then back in again to some sort of esoteric rap situation. Um, old movies, dusty, sitting around the house. Bizarre, so. I was once reminiscent of your pearl gaze. We drank for days and scratched away the burden of our ways. Just eyes behind the form and voice. I was annoyed and my mouth blew a dove distorted. These tracks are rough. There's later on versions, but. Um, I didn't, all I did was mix down the track in the end. I didn't master it or anything like that. I didn't even do the vocals. I just arranged it with my brother. I was sending it off to um, Semantics the Sorcerer. He'd done a wicked job of just piecing it together over us, making sure all the lyrics were like, you know what I mean, in the right zone. He mastered the album as well, which, I mean, even in this track, I didn't know I had a sub bass sitting in the track. When Semantics sent, sent it back, the sub bass was just like awesome, man. It's, uh, I knew at certain points that I couldn't take my knowledge further so I was happy to hand it over to someone that had a lot more experience in, in putting something together and it was a blessing to have him support us man so he brought the album to another level and I think that just shows you don't need to be knowing everything especially if you're at the beginning you know what I mean you can also you can make an idea and give it to someone else and they're, they'll perfect it for you you know what I mean so I think it shows that I haven't mastered everything on this machine. Maybe I didn't need to to get this this thing finished, basically. So there was a lot of help from from that side of things. So I think it's cool. I mean, I could break the track down, but I think it, yeah, let's do a little thing. What we got in there? Just two samples sitting over a beat basically. It's a little bit of dust in there, hi-hats, kick, snare, and a bit of percussion just to bring it alive a bit. After that, just got two samples sitting on top of each other. Take the piano out. It's just like a cello sound, that's all it is, just drawing you through the track. That's like the undertone, and then we're going to put the piano in, and then we've got that little melody and such that will bring you through. It's 
lucky, man. When you, you can make a hundred beats and not get that emotion that sometimes you need. This one just kind of carried that emotion, you know what I mean? Add it, two samples layered over the top. A few fills, a few little tweaks here. I mean, if I look at the piano. project say so it's just got a high pass filter on it a little bit of rezo just bending up slowed down by two and I'm not I don't usually fill the whole pad up either I just it's a couple I'm happy with it I'm gonna fill out 16 bars just change it every now and again There, built the 8 bar, built the 16, built the 20, a few dips at the back end of it, I think. Um, into the chorus, the chorus is 8 bars. Sinister stripping likes, likes a chorus, so we always have them in there. Um, coming back out to another 20 bars, and then another chorus, and then an outro, and just a fade, basically. So, again, we're looking over 2 minutes, 2 minutes 30. 3 minute track Sway with one foot in the grave Turn the page I grab these cheekbones with my rage The dead canary sings the more lion in a cage Just again, each layer is just broken down as the, as the track moves on Just drop down with the beat star That percussion plays its part It's just a simple bell but it's, it's, uh, Yeah, Fatal Bouquet I like that track man. Darker stuff so. The next showcase is, is just a little track that I've been putting together recently. Um, I say it's been a couple of years since, well, to end of, start of 2015 we dropped it, so Dark Romanticisms. I mean, rather now, he's got some space, there's other albums coming out from him that now me and him can now focus on a new project. So the first thing we said was we don't want to do Dark Romanticism again. So that subject's done, end off. So we're coming with something else now. We're not quite sure yet. Um, I'm not going to tell you what any themes are. It's just us mucking about at the moment, trying to get some vibes going, so we're playing with advert breaks, or maybe, do you know what I mean, In interludes, stuff like that, more samples, do you know what I mean, coming in. What's this? This is, this is horror. This is found in the horror vault of that YouTube crate we own, and uh, dug out, looped up, it's got some weird vibe from it, man, it's just Soul Sonic, we're gonna call it Soul Sonic, man. I mean, we've got that, we've got that bass drum coming, uh, bass guitar, so sitting there, a little atmospheric kind of stuff, so a bit bouncy, a bit moody, you make these tracks, man, you can never, sometimes, again, you can find it, you can't, about a day and a half, just messing about with this sample, man, so, I mean, if I look into it, so it's just, just a 16, this is um, the, Chorus basically, so a 16 bar breakdown. No, actually, this is the outro, this is the outro. So it's just me fucking about with pads at the end, just bam, 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 doing all that paddy stuff, you know what I mean? So, just to finish it like that. But each, this track, the way the MV works, it's broken down basically in patterns. So I know that's my main 16 bars beats arranged. Again, we're looking at the perk, same stuff. Just finding that sample, finding that loop. One bar loop all the way. I think they're cool having it in the pocket when it fits, it fits. It just roll with it, man. And after that, I'm a sucker just to put something underneath it, something atmospheric, you know what I mean? Let's try and see. You. Something nasty, grainy. Found myself going a bit, what's the word, the techno y kind of sound. Just what, what I'm feeling. Pop sort of thing going on, you know what I mean? I'll take that, spin it around, fit it in the. Somehow I've got, if, I, if I'm honest, this sample. Breaking down the beat now. It's from some old 1970s Italian slasher movie, you get me? That's the bit. As soon as I heard that about, I'm gonna borrow that for a bit. Hear me. Let's 
sitting there, it's like, oh, it's got all these things bouncing around. Maybe it's even mixed for me. Maybe I'm saying too much. But that's what we got. That's what we're rolling with, you know what I mean? And then I found this little German. <laughs> that's some of that, you know what I mean? Catch the listener on the tube going, what the fuck? Coming in. It's a whole tune, man. Put together in the day, like I say, so you've got intro, 20 bar, 20 bar verse, 8 bar chorus, 20 bar verse. So it's all laid out. I know how my brother wants it. He might come back and say, I want to do three sixteens. I'll just trim it back down, rearrange it again. So it's not a problem. It's, it's got enough sample in it for me to chop it up and just break it as a break. Reva, you know what I mean? So, I mean, sometimes you'll end up with four layers of samples sitting on top of each other, just so it turns out sometimes you just get two, put them in the pocket and it just sits and fits. And then it's into the mixer, you're always playing with the EQ, pushing things along, up, down. It's all in the yeah, no, there's every, everyone's been EQ'd to a point. Maybe I haven't done it perfectly, but at the moment it's just finding the balance that then I can either send it off stems if need be, or it's a whole track and someone can hopefully help me master it. Or maybe I can get that get to that stage myself. Because again, you can do that on this machine, but my, I, I don't know how to do that yet. So yeah, that's where as soon as I learn to get the monitors and trust your ears. Sounds all right, man. So. No name. Track number 17 or something it's called, so. There we go. <laughs> right, this is um another showcase. It's Again, it's one of the more recent tracks that I'm working on and trying to mould into a style that, that can fit in with about, I don't know, I think we've got about eight tracks that we've worked on and looked at and thought, ah, oh, these could sit together and make a, a new album, basically. So it's another track that's in the in the making so to speak yet to be signed off or chucked in the bin of nah not my type sort of stuff so i mean that's just the beat at the moment it's just some forgotten there percussions here comes Stringy, gritty kind of feel. I say Asian, you know what I mean? Maybe a bit of Asian kind of influence. Okay. Sinister heard it's like, yeah, it's like I'm walking into an old Western bar or something, like a gunslinger. I don't know if that's a concept for hip hop, but just looking for that emotion again, you know what I mean? So, I think this might have been that dude walking through the bamboo place with a pipe, just. Some mellow dude from California just chilling. I'm taking that sample. This lady to come from somewhere else. So again, there's layers and layers of samples. It's not layers and layers. Let's say one, two, three, four samples sitting in there basically. Top of the drums. So, I mean the whole track. Again. Same format. Every time I make a beat now, I'll give it to Singer Star and it's the same format. Maybe the intro's a bit longer depending on what samples we use, 12 bars, 13 bars, whatever it takes to get the drop to start the track. So I'm probably so I'm sitting on an eight bar intro just to build up into the track. I'm sitting, sitting on 20 bars again. sample, you know what I mean, you can put a sample on the one bar loop, get that sample that just sits over four bars, if you just get it in the pocket, it just sits there, there's ability to just offset it, shuffles, all that stuff, but that's when we break down the beat, but at the moment we're just looking for the atmosphere, we're trying to generate in the beats again, as I've been saying, it's not, as I see it, a standard hip hop formula, but it's just the music I'm making, man, and, and we'll share it. If it gets chosen. <laughs> I 
need like crackles in there as well, why not? Everyone uses it, but for a reason it works, man. A little bit of dirtiness in there. There we go. Um, apart from the beats, the, the drums, everything's off YouTube, man. Just sampled out, mixed up, filled out, or in. There we go. Sound different. This is the composition part where I'm going to show you what I use, the MV8800, obviously my monitors, my laptop and my focus right basically to um, find samples, put them together and hopefully come up with something that someone will want to use. Um, this beat has been selected for something, um, so I'll break it down, um, let's say standard drums in the sense that someone's given them me. Given, given them to me on the CD. I've used them numerous times, doubled them up if need be. Um, yeah, those drum packs, that's what they're called. Really. So, pretty standard. I mean, well, I've got 16 on here at the moment. So the pads are just allow me to choose. Sometimes I'll go through those CDs. I won't even pick one to 16. I'll pick one, two, just drop them in. See what I get, just that randomness. So it's obviously my hats they playing on so that's sitting there um, I must admit my ma my hats I usually just go for a template I just love the sound of the fusion swings man whether they're high axe or low I just I just like the fusion and we all know what, how important fusion sounds are to a lot of that flowing music so for me I could play it I ain't I use a template it's a fusion swing it just allows me to just get that little flow and that off-point feeling um, then we go all in there. That's not filtered at all. Let me see what comes in. So I jump to the drum grid. I'm looking, I use, well, I've got three kicks in there. So all sitting on top of each other basically. I've got and 14. That's the thump in there. So if I look at that, no filters, but it's on the plus 16. <laughs> One. So no fills in there. So three sitting on top of each other. So I'm getting that. It's quite heavy. It's not mixed or anything like that, and that might need to get taken down, obviously. But let's start with a boom at the beginning, man. And even that. Uh, when it comes to our snares, I do believe. Yeah, hey, so this is again. I just sometimes I just go in random, right? Stick these two together. What's it sound like? So that's obviously a lot of reverb in there. Let's just turn that down a little tad. Let's see. Yeah, I played with the EQ on this. I pushed it by two the frequencies up a bit as well. But it's just in the mixing stage at the moment. I just put it there. We sent it out again. Someone else hopefully will be able to get it and master it in a way that makes it sound, let's say, more experienced. So then again, what have I got here? I'm just playing on here. So just all, uh, the old crackle. Just taking off an old record sampler. Sp speed it up maybe. Uh, plus four, yeah. High pass frequency. Just a bend down so it just slowly comes out. Attack and all that amplifier. Um, therefore, I'd probably put that in after. So the drums are simple, let's just not. Hi hats, kick, snare. So I'll start with that, then I know, right, I've got to fill this up, man. A little sample, because I want it to be gritty anyway, so let's start with that. It might need a bit of a mix again. Then, what I've got here. So I've not even gone hardcore, I've just found two samples here. So I like those, I'm gonna use those. Why should I fill up 16? I'm not, again, I'm not too jumpy around on the pad. If I can get it to flip into another, if that's it, one bar loop, I'm taking it. And again, I can turn around to Sinus and say, hey, what do you think of this? If it works for him, it works for me. So I've just got that. Just 
it's like a heartbeat in essence it's just keeping the drive through the last bar will just carry over two even if that's glitching you might not even hear that in the tune so again i'm not even bothered about some simple mistakes in the track i don't even mind that it's maybe not even a true loop it works when you piece it together so what we're we sitting on there so that's standard drum pack layered an old dusty sample and a sample where have i found this from what's it doing let's see if i can find this now let's see if i can expand it so again i've just moved that sample via the clipboard onto the other pad it just kind of makes it easy looks like i'm pressing the buttons hard so this machine's a bit old man <laughs> If I open up this sample now, let me have a look what done where it came from. I might expose it. Turn that off. So again, sounding like that old 70s horror film stuff. I keep I keep finding man. Atmosphere, a few elements in there, some cheesy, some not. It's got that 80s horror feel to it. So I've decided I want that bit, that bit alone. it's a case of looking for a melody or something that just takes you along you know a little bit of dusty piano playing in there let's see on this one I've, I've got 15 pads of it I mean, when you get that sample, you think, right, I, I'm going to spend ages on this because I know I can, I can spread that sample out over three minutes. What is it? Take this again. So obviously, again, a high frequency pass on it just to bring the tops out. It's probably an advert for Air Asia or something, I ain't got a clue. But I'll put that in. sort of sound you know what I mean um, and then dropping that all together so three samples from the internet and a stock set of drums so it's kind of dusty and gritty and atmospheric again uh, 87 BPM it's probably, I, for some reason I work from 88 to 94 maximum I just find the pace a bit better for me I don't know why but this one touches 87 uh, I mean that's just four bars of it. I've obviously gone through sequence, pattern list. Boy, I've got f over 15 patterns of this doing all various things. It's a little hole loop on it, so it's that that ding 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 keeps repeating itself. Uh, yeah. I've spun it backwards. Why not? So then, once I've, I've decided or got bored of making all these variations, I'll bring it up a level to a uh, song mode. 
So all these layers, again layers I quite like working in. If I want to edit, I can come back down, work it, tweak it, it's, it, I go back up, it's all there. So I come back to the pattern track and that's where I basically drop all these patterns that I've made into a sequence that will allow someone hopefully to pick it up and use it as a beat. So it's, again, it's just making sure it builds up, it takes you in. Few changes here and there. I try not to go too crazy with the drums. Just drop one out every now and again, or a double tap, just to bring it round. So, yeah, I don't even know if that's the correct method of making beats, but that's the way I make them, man, and that's the way I enjoy making them. I think I keep refining it, keep wanting to get better. I, keep, I enjoy the hobby, man, and that's the reality. And when you got someone to work with, MC wise collaborations and thinking and building things um, it's what keeps me doing it so it might not be everyone's cup of tea but I do it for me I'm a bro if we like it we we'll share it if others like it that's a bonus man for everyone so it's about trying to contribute trying to be different in some ways uh, I'm not digging in the crates a lot old school ways I'm just using a bit of technology in a geeky kind of way to the sampling things and trying to make things a bit different for me so hopefully that allows you just to see how I go about making my beats and why I make my beats and what influences me and how this machine just kind of brings it all together in a kind of cool way man so yeah again I ain't got a name for this track or anything it's just it's just a rotten dirty kind of journey man Warrior flutes, man. <laughs>